unscrupulous con artists prey on people who are down on their luck. The following tips have been compiled by Mississippi's Office of Attorney General to help protect you from becoming a victim of fraud or deception. More tips and information can be found by logging on to www.agimjimfoothood.com. Central Harrison County Public Utility District numbers 1, 2, and 3. That's 8.30 a.m. Hopkins, Barbie and Hopkins, 2701 24th Avenue. So we're going to play an interview that me and myself and uh, Wade went down there to uh, Tim Keller's office, which for, for like the, right after Gustav, um, I was replaced by from Tim Keller and, and her board approval for uh, public information officer, so they took it away. I've been public information officer for the EOC uh, for, shoot, since the storm, you know? And uh, developed a lot of plans. Katrina. Huh? For Katrina? Katrina? Yeah. Yeah, for Katrina. Yeah, right. For Katrina. Well, uh, until Gustav came, and then I was re replaced. Right. You know, so, which uh, crippled us for public information. A lot of misinformation was going out because we couldn't verify anything or... You know, a lot of folks were upset at us. Please don't be upset at us. We were just relaying what we were given, all right? Because I got removed from that position directly to be basically where the public, you know, calls us. We ask, you know, as a public information officer, it was a great is a match made in heaven for our emergency management because I can tell exactly what's going on to our fine director of emergency management here, um, Hootie, and then, uh, of course, he would have real-time data and then spit it back out to a press release back to us in real time. So. The speed of the information was fantastic. Well, of course, politics mixed in. They had to control. I had Steve Seymour saying, hey, film all this around here so we can show the deplorable conditions of the EOC and what we're operating in. Well, okay, I said, okay, and we filmed it, all right? right. And then I'm like, and then it made me think about, well, why are our first responders here in the first place? Okay. okay? Why are our first responders operating? And I, God bless Bay St. Louis for allowing us to go there. Right. I really got to thank Mayor Farr for that. You know, they allowed us to go there. The county took a model on it. But the point is that we had a perfectly operational facility in the kill. Right. They cost money and they couldn't afford it. Well, right. where did the money go? That is the question you need to ask yourselves and ask your elected officials, okay? But we're going to play this interview because we uh, apparently... On, on the 5th, I guess it was, the 5th of September, I was chunked out the EOC and told, I'm out of the EOC. Okay? And there's no need for WQRZ or my function in the EOC any longer. Well, here's the conversation from Tim Keller that would not give it to me in writing. Uh, he wouldn't let Hootie give it to me in writing. All right? He wouldn't tell, you know, I asked, well, uh, because I have an FCC license that was requested, uh, from the Federal Communications Commission to operate emergency traffic down there at that building. And thank you again, Bay St. Louis, you know, for allowing me to be in the building, which we still don't have anything in writing saying we can come or go. Right. All right? So, but I have to have it in writing relinquishing that FCC license to the federal government to tell them who requested it. Yes. And I can't do it no other way. It has to be in writing. It's not no more good old boy politics around here, y'all. Yeah. All right? But it has to deal with the federal broadcast station, and this is what happened. Apparently, Tim Keller told told uh, Hootie that no, you can't have uh, you can't give it to me in writing, and he can't give it to me in writing. And verbal's good enough. That's what he said. So I went down there on Monday. Wade went with me as a witness, and we recorded him in his because they they uh, didn't have a meeting that day for some here's, reason. Here's huh? my opinion. But, is that your opinion? My opinion. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, recycle. That's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're going to play it so y'all can just get it from the horse's mouth, all right? Because he told us that we don't need to be there. I was there on, on the board agenda to request the 25000 because they know we're broke, mm -hmm. all right? To, because uh, we don't have any money, you know, to operate down there at the EOC and continue right. to move. That's your dollars. Now, wait a minute. Folks out there that support us, you support listeners out there. Realize this, and the underwriters too. You support us to do something that we provide public information. We're in the OC. But the county uh, tax dollars, your tax dollars now, won't, they don't want to spend any money to help us out or throw us a bone. Right. Mm. So that means all of the money that's donated to the private nonprofit charity, the publicly supported charity that you support, is going to 
take up the slack for what they don't even care to spend the money on. That's the sick part of it. Well, we'll just play the interview and let you listen for yourselves. And then we're going to read a nice statement that I got from uh, that Tim Keller wrote himself from 06 about the same issue. Right. Okay, that will just shock you. So, as far as I'm concerned, I will say it right now. Tim Keller is a liar. Here you go, y'all. Hear what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> you know, if you're under federal authority and the board is obligated to that, that board of supervisors attorneys is going to have to sort through to say Bryce has got to be in the Varsity Operations Center. If he goes through it and says there's no obligation to Hancock County, have Bryce and his operation run out of the emergency operation center, and that's basically where it is. I don't know of another radio station, and I'm not talking about 87 AM over in Louisiana. I'm talking about the ones that are, that are here. I don't know of another radio in one year. I'm talking about in, in Mississippi in this area, where another radio station is, is allowed inside the emergency operation center Right now, I'm under the order of the board saying, we don't want that in there. Get the word to Hootie. Service to the public is my number one job. I understand. Totally authorized. I understand. Yeah. Is it the obligation to the public for you to be able to get that information out while you're sitting in the emergency operations center? That's basically what we're dealing with. Well, uh, Would you be at another place getting that information out? Well, if we learn a lesson from Katrina and not become complacent three years later, Katrina destroyed all cell phone communications, all radio communications, all telephone communications. Okay. If there was not a broadcast facility in the EOC, and FEMA did not give out 3,500 radios to people so they could tune in and get information directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak, it would lead to uh, dissent against you know, the local government, well, what are they doing? We don't know what they're doing because they're not telling us what they're doing. And when you have phone lines down, your cell phones don't work, you cannot fax uh, letters of uh, communications to these other no, agencies no. saying, this is what's going on in the county. Having a broadcast facility in an EOC has never been done before, Katrina. Bryce was the first. Yeah. They pad, they, they're they're working on a thing of uh, bills in Congress, bills in Congress that, that's saying that broadcast, that broadcast radio uh, are first responders. Yeah. 870 AM, a uh, multi-million dollar radio station, got permission from St. Tammany Parish to locate in their EOC, and they are compensated as any other emergency support function because... The lines communication break down from phone lines. If there's no other way to get communication out, if you have a facility that can broadcast it out to the public and they know that there's a radio station, it doesn't matter how we have to be 103.5. But if you have that medium, you can tell the public exactly what's going on, where to get water, where to get shelter, in a worst-case scenario.